Hi friends, welcome to my channel again. Today I will be making the match reviews of the last three matches of the Japan Under-19 team of their last three matches of the Under-19 World Cup which happened last month in South Africa. So as you can see on the screen, uh, after Japan uh, were not able to qualify for the Super League stage after they lost their two matches against uh, India and Sri Lanka, uh, there was this plate league where the bottom eight teams play against each other for uh, position number 9 to 16. This was, uh, we look at the score, uh, we look at the screen, um, the matches between England and Japan, England under 19 team versus Japan under 19 team. And uh, England won the toss and they decided to bowl first. Uh, Japan went in and uh, as you must be knowing uh, in my last uh, episode of the uh, match reviews of the Japan match I had informed that uh, Japan was not able to play the batsmen were not able to play the fast bowling and not able to adapt and uh, both the scores 42 all out against India and 43 all out against Sri Lanka the batsmen were not able to cope with the pace and the spin of uh, the quality teams like India and Sri Lanka so this time against England, uh, I feel our boys were uh, getting mature enough and uh, every match they were learning from their mistakes. And as you can see from the scorecard, uh, it's not a very good score, but still there is improvement. Uh, Japan this time managed to make 93. Now the start was not bad because as you can see here, the fall of wickets, the first wicket fell on 16, second on 42, 49. And uh, we were 78 for two wickets uh, after uh, 29 overs when the captain Marcus Thurgate was out. So Japan was in a very good position to make uh, around 150 or a 200, total of 200 score. But uh, after that, the middle order collapsed and uh, we were unable to make a, a high score. We played, Japan played 38.4 overs and made 93 runs. England then came to bat and uh, England being a very strong team uh, made the runs 94 runs in 11.3 overs so we do not have highlights of this match anywhere uh, on the web but uh, the only point I wanted to make you is uh, there was an improvement of the Japan batsmen from the last two matches so now Japan will play against Canada Japan played against Canada after this match uh, in their next match which was the quarter semi-finals uh, as you can see, this is the playoff semi-final two, Canada versus Japan, uh, Canada under 19 versus Japan under 19. In this match, Japan won the toss and decided to bowl first for the first time in the tournament. So what happened is uh, the opener, uh, Nicholas Manohar, played really well. He made a century, 101 of 102 balls. And then uh, the middle order also chipped in. Uh, Canada made a score of 300 exactly in 300 balls in 50 overs. The Japan batsman Neil Date became the first Japanese batsman to score a half century in an ICC Full Nations tournament. Congratulations, Neil. Well played. But uh, the other batsmen were not able to cope up. Again, the start was good. Japan was 73 for two this time, as you can see in the scorecard. But uh, the third wicket of Marcus again led to a, a, a of, you know, uh, the middle order collapse and then Japan was all out for 118 in 29.4 overs. So that you, again you can see there is an improvement from 93 against England, we went to 118. So as you can see every match Japan's batsmen are in improving, that means they are getting used to playing uh, the high level teams and uh, getting used to taking the pressure and playing under pressure. That's why Japan then, uh, the last match of Japan was against Nigeria. Before going to the last match, let's see the highlights, small highlights of the match uh, versus Canada versus Japan. Canada starting to bat first, Manohar who is a centurion was batting really well. As you can see, he played some really good mature shots all around the wicket, offside, leg side, everywhere. Let's go ahead because uh, see this is uh, Manohar, Nicholas Manohar made a century, well played Nicholas. Then Japan came to bat, 
as you can see uh, akil kumar uh, a pace bowler from canada he was a handful for the japanese batsmen the opening was good but after that the wicket starting to fail again bold yorkland ball being the most damaging ball for the japanese batsmen they just couldn't apply themselves and uh, cope up with the pace of akil kumar so this is akil so that's how uh, japan lost their match the semi final 2 plate league match against uh, canada and then it was the last match the 15th position match against nigeria this was a score card japan again won the toss and selected to bat first this time japan made their highest score in the tournament gradually japan's batsmen are going from 42 43 93 113 in the last match and then now 115 somehow the batsmen are not able to uh, go on for a big score after settling uh, setting down uh, as you can see shu noguchi made 31 marcus has made 15 so after getting set the batsmen are uh, getting out that was the main problem throughout the tournament of japan batsmen the uh, time of the bowlers now Nigeria were able to score 116 for two wickets in 22.4 overs. So Nigeria won it easily. Congratulations Nigeria. Japan was not able to win any match in the tournament. But uh, to be honest friends, uh, we being a very uh, a baby as I said in the last episode, we being a baby in the international cricket uh, scenario. I'm sure Japan's batsmen and Japan's bowlers must have learned a lot from this exposure. as most of our players 11 of the players from the squad of 15 are uh, below 17 years old so if japan gets chance to qualify in the next under 19 tournament 11 of them are uh, eligible to play for the next uh, uh, in the next 19 under 19 world cup which will be a very positive and a very big strength for the japanese team because these 11 players will already be having this year's experience this year's exposure and which which will help them improve in the next world cup let's have a quick look at the japan nigeria match japan batting first as you can see again the yorkel and the ball being the real tormentor run out here some run outs in the world cup also were pretty damaging Yorkel and ball playing the full pitch delivery is seems to be the weakness of our batsmen. We need to work on that. So as you can see, there were some partnerships, and uh, Nigeria were able to make the 112 runs easily. Suleiman got 50 from Nigeria, and in 22 overs they were able. to make chase down the total of 115 so this is how japan's world cup went uh, this time around we were happy just to qualify uh, as marcus said in his interview a couple of months ago that we were surprised that japan qualified we had a li very little time to practice and uh, uh, we did not have a coach until uh, the last 6 months uh, so uh, our coach practiced hard our uh, management practiced hard and uh, did whatever they can do and worked a lot to make the team stronger in the last 6 months and uh, i'm sure if japan gets chance to qualify in the next world cup our boys will play much better and perform much better all the best boys we are all proud of you all the best gambade arigatou gozaimasu